I am Dr. Anil Mehta. I was a professor and head in the Department of Business Administration, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. Today, we'll be talking about new models of leadership. Leadership is a subject which has been widely discussed not only in the stream of management but almost in all the disciplines of social sciences. Today, I'll be discussing with you the new models of leadership as well as in brief about traditional models of leadership also and how the changes have taken place amongst these leadership model. As we all know that leadership is basically an influence process in which the leader influences his or her followers in order to achieve certain goals or objectives. It is basically an interaction between the leader and his follower in such a manner that whatever leader desires, whatever the goals and objectives of the organization are, they are effectively pursued by his followers. To tell you about the leader in bit detail in the modern context, I will say that a leader is one who motivates his employees to bring about their best to achieve the organizational goals and performance. This is the basic aim or task of a leader that through motivating people, leader could be able to achieve the goals and objectives of the organization. A leader is one who really encourages, motivate, develop and train people to adapt with the job requirement. A leader is one who develops the second line of leadership. A leader is one who instills confidence among people. A leader is one who entrusts his followers with a sense of responsibility. A leader holds his follower with full dignity and pride. A leader provides all the support so that followers can work in a very effective manner to achieve organizational policies and programs. If these aims and tasks are achieved, certainly leader will be very, very successful. If you talk about leadership, to me, there are three important ingredients. The first one is leader without which leadership is not possible. Number two, followers. Unless followers are there, to whom leader is going to lead? And the third important thing is the situation. Unless situation demands Real test of leadership will not be possible. So basically, leadership is a combination or interaction between these three important variables, that is leader, follower, and the situation. Now, what are the core responsibility or responsibilities of a leader? Basically, there are three important responsibilities of a leader. Number one, task. Unless the goal or task is achieved, perhaps leader will not be effective one. It is expected that with the help of follower, leader should be able to achieve the task or goal or aim of the organization. Number two, developing people. A leader is one who develops the second line of leadership. The task of a leader is not to perform the job himself, but to train, to develop other persons. And secondly, developing second line of leadership. So in absence of a leader or when the leader quits, somebody should be there to shoulder his responsibility. And the third important thing is a leader develops a strong 
cohesive team. So obviously, these are the three important responsibilities of a leader, achieving the task, developing people and building a strong, intact and cohesive team. Now, the question arises, what are the important leadership models? Broadly speaking, leadership models can be classified into two categories. Number one, traditional leadership models. Number two, modern leadership models. Let's begin with the traditional leadership models. The first leadership model is autocratic leadership model in this category. An autocratic leader is one who concentrates all the powers with him. He believes in one-way communication. He simply gives the directions and orders and expect that followers follow the orders or directions as it is. There is least involvement of the followers in the affairs of the organization or in the persuasion of the goals. In fact, uh, there are two types of autocratic leaders. Number one, that is authoritarian leader and number two, benevolent leader. Authoritarian leader or autocrat is one who not only believes in close control and not only concentrates the power, but he creates an atmosphere of threat and fear in the organization. And he believes in punishing the people or for the good performance, giving them some sort of rewards. But in benevolent leader, of course, the leader is autocrat, but he is a bit soft and he also takes uh, the care of the welfare or well-being of the people. The second kind of leadership model is democratic leader or democratic leadership. A democratic leader is one who involves the followers in the decision-making process. In fact, uh, he also listens the grievances and problems of the followers and the followers uh, get some sort of freedom and he, they can always provide their advice to the leader and whenever the leader takes a decision, he always consults his followers and simultaneously sometimes the followers are also given some sort of freedom to take their own decision. The third type of traditional leadership model is laissez-faire leadership where leader virtually delegates his most of the powers. It is a fully decentralized kind of relationship between the leader and the followers and followers get the complete authority not only in the functioning but decision making. The role of the leader is just as a coordinator or facilitator. The fourth one is bureaucratic leadership where leader strictly adheres to the rules, regulations and procedures. Leader just believes in maintaining the status quo and leader hardly takes any initiatives on his own. So obviously in this kind of leadership, the leader is more concerned with following the rules, regulations and procedures and there is a very little scope for creativity and innovations in the organization. And uh, the most practical kind of leadership model is situational leadership model, which believes that no leadership style is good or bad. It all depends the kind of atmosphere or situation in which the leader has to take the decision or to lead people. So leaders should be flexible enough to be adaptable with the situation. Sometimes he has to be a bit tough. Sometimes he has to be mild also. In case of the dealing with the mature people, he can adopt the democratic style or uh, 
where people are quite responsive, then he can adopt the laissez-faire leadership also. So, situational kind of leadership is most practical, but here the thing is that leader must be quite flexible enough so that he can very quickly switch over from one leadership style to other one. And one more style that is expert leadership. Sometimes a person may emerge as a leader because of his expertise in his subject domain. If he is quite competent in that case, people follow his instructions, directions or orders. So these are some of the traditional leadership style. But with the changing times, now we are talking about some new leadership models also. What these models are? To begin with, let us talk about transformational leadership, which is nowadays widely used and most popular concept and lot of researches are going on on transformational leadership. What is transformational leadership? Transformational leadership uh, lead employees by aligning employees goal with the leader's goal. So it is basically alignment of the employees goals with basically the leader's goals or alternatively the organizational goals. Thus employees working for transformational leader start focusing on the company's well-being rather than what is best for them as an individual employee. Employees know it very well that if they pursue the organizational goals, then automatically the individual goals will be achieved. So transformational leadership basically aligns the individual goals with the organizational goals. In a transformational leadership, there are four important instruments which are available. The first one is that it is basically purpose driven, it is basically role model and whatever the leader preaches, it is he is also practicing it that is individualized influence would be there. Secondly, in transformational leadership, what is important is inspirational motivation where the leader is not uh, pressurizing the followers but rather inspires followers to achieve the goal. Then in transformational leadership, leader takes into consideration the individual needs. So basically it is based on individualized consideration. It is people driven and leader is genuinely concerned with the needs and wants of the follower and basically it is concerned with intellectual stimulation that is leader not only believes in status quo but rather he goes a step forward and he is innovating he challenges the followers to be innovative and creative so innovation and creative becomes very important for the organization in case of transformational leadership the second kind of model is referred as transactional leadership Transactional leadership ensures that employees demonstrate the right behavior because the leader provides resources in exchange. So basically it is believed that when the leader is providing resources and necessary input, then it is expected that follower must uh, give the required performance also. So it is basically interrelation between the leader and follower in terms of the giving and taking. So this kind of leadership is based on three important characteristics. Number one, rewarding employees for their performance. So in order to get the job done, reward the employees. And secondly, this uh, model believes in active management by exception, wherein leader becomes proactive to anticipate the problems and whenever the problems are anticipated, leader takes the uh, prior precaution. Otherwise, leader gives 
full freedom to the follower and in case of passive management by exception leader only interferes when there is a critical problem so obviously the difference between the active management exception or passive management by exception is that in active management by exception leader becomes quite proactive to know the problem but in passive management uh, by exception leader only takes the necessary decision and action when the crisis occurs so you can very well understand what is the difference between the transformational leader and transactional leader as we know that in uh, transformational leader basically the leaders are proactive but in case of uh, transactional leader they are just uh, responding to the situation in case of uh, transformational leadership it believes in change and changing the culture of the organization but in case of transactional leader it only works within the organizational culture similarly uh, in case of uh, transformational leader basically the goals and objectives are achieved through uh, ideals and moral values but in case of transactional leadership basically goals are achieved through the reward to the followers and basically depending upon the performance of the followers rewards are given similarly uh, in case of transformation leadership followers are motivated and encouraged to achieve the group performance and to use the group resources but here in case of transactional leadership uh, motivation is provided by basically fulfilling their needs or self interest and similarly in case of transformation leadership basically individualized considerations are very important and uh, here the leader provides all necessary support and help to the followers in achieving the goals and objectives but transactional leadership is more based on management by exception so there is an difference of approach and aptitude of leadership in case of transactional versus transformational leader another important uh, model of leadership is leader mentor exchange theory leader mentor exchange which is also abbreviated as lmx theory proposes that the type of leadership uh, or leader have with their followers or members of the organization is the key to understanding uh, how leader influences the employees or the followers it means that in case of leader member exchange theory basically the entire performance and the relationship will be based on relationship between the leader and the follower so it is basically a didactic relation that is leader follower relation and the leadership effectiveness will depend upon the quality of leadership uh, that is depending upon the leader follower relationship there can be two types of relationship here number 1 high quality relationship and number 2 low quality leader member exchange relationship in high quality leader member exchange relationship obviously the relations are quite close cordial well knit and where followers are respecting the leaders leader is also very much attached to the followers and in such case they have a excellent relationship which will have a positive impact on the organizational performance but in case of low quality relationship the relationships are not congenial or good between leader and follower and it may adversely affect the functioning of uh, the organization and ultimately there might be lot of problems in pursuing the organizational goals or objective so this theory believes that leader must have a high quality relationship with the followers then another model is called as a servant relationship it's a new concept servant relationship approach defines the 
leader's role as serving the need of others. According to this approach, the primary mission of the leader is to develop employees and help them reach their goals. Servant leaders put their employees first, understand their personal needs and desires, empower them and help them to develop their career. So here, leader just acts as if he is a servant. He has to serve his follower. And as a motto of service, whatever a leader can do for his followers, he takes the best action to take the interest into the consideration of the followers. So here, one more kind of relationship is referred as authentic relationship, which says that effective leadership have to stay true to, the, to themselves. The authentic relationship approach embraces this value. It is key to advise us to persuade. Basically, in authentic relationship, leader is very much concerned about the role, about the rules and regulations, and about his own moral values and deed. Whatever the leader teaches, he practices also. That is quite important. And obviously, in case of authentic relationship, what is most important is that is he processes the situation in a very balanced way. Secondly, he internalizes the moral perspective. As I just mentioned, ethical, moral and values are very important. Similarly, leader keeps the complete transparency in his deed and action and leader is very well aware about his own strengths and weaknesses. So these are the four important components of authentic relationship. And finally, I would say that uh, 360 degree relationship is quite important. I would say that it is not merely the leader's position that is important. A person can be leader from any position. It means that leader can lead to his followers, to his superiors, to his subordinates and more important is self-leadership. One can lead uh, self that is referred as personal relationship. So obviously, a person must have a leadership traits and qualities and from these qualities, uh, irrespective of the position or status, one can lead to any level upwards, downwards, lateral and self-leadership. So these are some of the new concepts which are emerging very fast nowadays. So uh, friends, that's all for today. Thank you.